Right, so a very good evening to all of you. So I am myself, Dr. Rajesh Gubba. Right, so a very good evening to all of you. So I am the general medicine educator on this Unacademy platform. So I am doing a series of the YouTube. So every day that particular YouTube series will be at 5.30 p.m. And this particular YouTube series will go up to the end of this month. So this in this entire YouTube series, I'll be discussing the test and discussion of the various chapters of general medicine. So today we will be doing the test and discussion on cardiology, tomorrow neurology, then pulmonology, then endocrinology and so on and so forth. And every day this particular test and discussion will be at 5.30 p.m. And as the part of the series and how I will be conducting this particular YouTube series will be is, I will be conducting them in the form of a quiz. Right. Yes, Kanna, good evening and uh, Anuj, my volume is at the peak and I think you have to increase the volume of your phone. Right now, let me start this particular, the test and discussion in the form of a quiz program. And we will be also having a winner at the last, okay? Right, now let me start the quiz. So whoever answers first will get the more marks. And each question will have 20 seconds. The question is, Absence of loud first heart sound in mitral stenosis indicates all except mild mitral stenosis, calcified mitral valve, presence of aortic regurgitation, first degree heart block. Right. So, all of you have answered incorrectly and the answer to this particular question is mild mitral stenosis. See, you listen to the question properly there. Absence of the loud first heart sound in mitral stenosis indicates all except. That means what is this particular question being asked? The question is asking you in which condition you are having loud first heart sound. Okay. Now you take calcified mitral valve. You will have soft first heart sound. Presence of aortic regurgitation. You will have soft first heart sound. Why? Because in aortic regurgitation, there will be increase in your LV and diastolic pressure. And that will reduce the gradient between the left atrium and as well as the left ventricle. And thereby, the first heart sound will be soft in patients with the aortic regurgitation with mitral stenosis. And first degree heart block, they will have the soft first heart sound. Right? The question asks this, absence of the loud first heart sound in mitral stenosis indicates all except. Right? That means the question is asking you, where do you have loud S1 in mitral stenosis? That will be in patients with the mild mitral stenosis, you will have loud first start sound, right? Now, we will move on to the next question. Right, so Hema has answered first. Very good, Hema. Right, the next question. Which of the following is true about the mitral valve prolapse? The first option is migration of the systolic and sorry, migration of the systolic click and systolic murmur towards the first heart sound during squatting, prophylactic beta blockers, restriction of the vigorous exercise to mitigate the risk of sudden cardiac death, and fourth option is displacement of one or both mitral valve reflets posteriorly into left atrium during systole. So what is the correct answer in this particular question? So you will have 20 seconds time, please opt the appropriate answer. Very good. So at the end of the poll, the correct answer here is displacement of one or both mitral valve reflets posteriorly into left atrium during systole is the correct answer. That is, the fourth option is the correct answer, right? Now you take the first option, that is migration of systolic click and systolic murmur towards squatting. Let me tell you, during squatting, what will happen is, the venous return increases. Now what will happen to your migration click 
what will happen to the migration of your systolic click and systolic murmur is the migration of systolic click and systolic murmur will be away from S1 when the venous return increases. So first option is incorrect option. And you take the second option that is prophylactic beta blockers. Let me tell you that most of the patients with the mitral valve prolapse, they are asymptomatic. They don't require the prophylactic beta blockers. You should give beta blockers only when they are symptomatic. So prophylactic beta blockers are not indicated in patients with the mitral valve prolapse. Next, the risk of sudden cardiac death is very, very rare in patients with the mitral valve prolapse. And you take the fourth option. What is mitral valve prolapse? It is nothing but it is the displacement of your mitral valve leaflets into the left atrium during left ventricular systole is what is called as mitral valve prolapse. So the fourth option is the correct answer, right? Okay. So leader of the poll is Hema and second is Mukesh. Very good Hema, you are maintaining the poll, right? And you take the next question. So answer fast to get more points. You have 20 seconds to this particular question. All of the following clinical findings are seen in a patient with isolated aortic stenosis except left ventricular impulse is displayed laterally, pulses bisphariance is the hallmark finding, systolic blood pressure is normal in early stages of disease, carotid thrill, which is the incorrect option. Right, so very good. So almost, uh, okay. So majority of you have answered this correctly. The answer to this particular question is, pulses bisphariance is hallmark finding. It is an incorrect statement. Now why? Let me explain. Now you take in patients with aortic stenosis. What is the very important type of pulse? The hallmark pulse in patients with aortic stenosis is pulses parvus et tardis. That is a slow raising pulse with late peaking. That is the characteristic pulse you will have in patients with the aortic stenosis. It is not your pulses bisphariance. Where will you have pulses bisphariance? Can anyone answer this question to me? Where do you have pulses bisphariance? Yes, I'm waiting for the answer. Very good, Dr. Mehta. So it is seen in patients with hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. It is seen in patients with aortic regurgitation, right? And it is seen in patients with aortic stenosis, aortic regurgitation with severe aortic stenosis, right? So these are the three conditions, HOCM, then aortic regurgitation, then AR with severe AS, they are the conditions where you will have, they are the conditions where you will have this pulses bisphariance, okay, right. Next, now you take the left ventricular impulse. Left ventricular impulse displayed laterally is a correct statement in case of aortic stenosis. And you take the third point, that is systemic blood pressure is normal in early stages of the disease is correct. When will you have the systolic blood pressure being reduced? Systolic blood pressure will be reduced in very severe stages of aortic stenosis. So that's a very important point that you should remember. Then about the carotid thrill. Definitely carotid thrill in these patients with aortic stenosis will be there. The murmur of the aortic stenosis can be filled over the carotid artery. That is what is called as the carotid thrill, right? So correct and the uh, option which is correct is pulses bisphariance is a hallmark finding is the incorrect statement and the question asked is except right okay so yes you should answer it fast and the faster one will get the correct point higher score hockey stick appearance in echocardiography is a feature of mitral stenosis mitral incompetence aortic stenosis aortic regurgitation Right, time's up. So very good. So majority of you have answered this correctly. The answer to this particular question is mitral stenosis. So in mitral stenosis, you will have what is called the hockey stick appearance in echocardiography, right? Where do you get this hockey stick appearance? Okay, so where do you get this hockey stick appearance on ECG? Any one of you? 
what is the condition where you will have hockey stick appearance on the ECG? Yes, I am waiting for the answer. Can anyone answer this question? Yes, Karna, which condition? Very good, Mahita. In patients with digoxin effect, in patients with digoxin effect, you will have hockey stick appearance in the ECG, right? Okay. We'll move to the next question. So until now, the leader is Kanna, right? He got nearly around plus 1065 points. And the second is Metal. Third is Hema, right? Okay. Now we will move to the next question. So answer quickly, you will get more points. So the next question is, in a patient, there is dyspnea in upright position, which is relieved in supine position. What is the diagnosis? Tachypnea orthopnea, tripopnea, platypnea. Okay, so very few have answered this question. The answer to this particular question is platypnea. So what is platypnea? Platypnea Yes, Mehta, what is tripopnea? Right. So, orthopnea is what? Orthopnea is like dyspnea in the supine position. Then what is your the, uh, platypnea? Platypnea is that the individual will be having dyspnea when the individual is in supine position. Right. But it is relieved in the upright position. That is what is called as the platypnea. Now, where do you have this platypnea? Anyone? What is the condition where you will have platypnea? So, platypnea is that in supine position, they'll have dyspnea. Whereas in upright position, the dyspnea reduces. So, what is the condition where you will have platypnea? Anyone of you? Not in congestive cardiac failure. In congestive cardiac failure, couple, you will have orthopnea. What is the condition where you will have platypnea, where the dyspnea will reduce on the upright position? No, not in cardiac tamponade, not in aortic stenosis. Okay, so just make a note of it, very important point. Platypnea is seen in patients with atrial myxoma, right? Atrial myxoma, you will have this platypnea. Why? Because whenever the individual lies in the supine position, that myxoma will obstruct the mitral valve. And whenever the individual sits, right, very good, Mukesh has answered this question. So, whenever the individual sit upright, what will happen is the myxoma will obstruct, whereas in supine position, it will be away from the mitral valve and thereby in supine position, the dyspnea will be relieved. Right? Okay. So, without confusion, I'll repeat everything again. Orthopnea, dyspnea in supine position. Right? Platypnea. In case of platypnea, dyspnea will be there in upright position. That will be relieved in the supine position. Can anyone tell me what is tripopnea? What is tripopnea? Tripopnea is that when the individual lies on one side, right? If the individual lies on one side, they will have dyspnea. That is what is called as tripopnea. Right. Okay. So, the next question, whoever answers fast will get the more marks. All are associated with the pulse being checked in the picture except Duruzi's sign early diastolic murmur, decreased LV and diastolic pressure, pulses dysperience. The question asked is except. That means which is the false statement. Right. So, very few people have answered this question correctly. And the answer to this particular question is decreased LV and diastolic pressure is the one which is an incorrect statement, right? What will you have in patients with... Now, what was that image suggestive of this particular image?
Yeah. The image which I have shown you was the image of aortic regurgitation where the individual was examining the water hammer pulse. So in aortic regurgitation, what is that you will have? In aortic regurgitation, you will have increased LV and diastolic pressure. There will not be decreased LV and diastolic pressure. There will be increase in the LV and diastolic pressure, right? And the remaining all, they are the features of aortic regurgitation. Dorosis sign is a feature of aortic regurgitation. Early diastolic murmur is a feature of aortic regurgitation. Pulses bisphariance is also the feature of aortic regurgitation. Right? Next. Yes, you are getting the next question. And whoever answers this fast will get more marks. A patient with angina, exertional syncope and left ventricular hypertrophy is diagnosed as aortic stenosis. What is the predicted lifespan of this particular patient? One year, two years, three years, four years. What is the predicted lifespan of this patient? Right. So, the correct answer here is three years. Remember this very, very important point. Individuals with angina and syncopal attack. Now, where do you get in aortic stenosis? There is a triad. What is a triad in aortic stenosis? Angina, syncopal attack and as well as dyspnea. Remember it as ASD, not atrial septal defect. Angina, syncopal attack, and as well as dyspnea. And if the individual has angina and syncopal attack, the predicted lifespan is three years. If the individual develops dyspnea with aortic stenosis, the predicted lifespan is just only two years. If the individual develops congestive heart failure in patients with aortic stenosis, the predicted lifespan is just only one year, right? So these patients with aortic stenosis, if they become symptomatic, they will have very poor prognosis, right? They'll have very poor prognosis, okay? And they have to be treated with aortic valve replacement, right? They have to be treated with aortic valve replacement. Okay, and let me see who is the leader of the poll until now. Okay, very good. So, St. Elmo is the leader of that particular question. And overall, the leaderboard is Kanna. Kanna is the leader of the entire leaderboard until now. Very good, Kanna. And the second is Suman. Right. And answer fast to get more points. Incorrect about chronic aortic regurgitation is chest pain, white pulse pressure, Quinky sign, late systolic murmur. Incorrect about aortic regurgitation is. Right. Very good. So, majority of you have answered this correctly. So, incorrect about chronic aortic regurgitation is the late systolic murmur will not be there. In aortic regurgitation, what is the. Yeah. So, in aortic regurgitation, what is a murmur? Can anyone tell me what is a murmur in aortic regurgitation? No, no. It is an early diastolic murmur. The, the classical murmur, yes, very good Suman. You will get an early diastolic murmur. You, yes, Mehta. The Austin Flint murmur, whatever you get, it is a functional murmur which is a mid-diastolic murmur in chronic aortic regurgitation, right? So the murmur, actual murmur is early diastolic murmur. You will not have the late systolic murmur uh, in patients with a chronic aortic regurgitation, right? Okay, now we will move on to the next question. So until now, right, so Mukesh has answered this question fast. Very good, Mukesh. And overall, the leader is Suman. Suman is the leading the poll until now. Okay. Next. So answer fast to get the more points. Most common valvular lesion seen in carcinoid syndrome is tricuspid stenosis and pulmonic stenosis, tricuspid insufficiency and pulmonic stenosis, mitral stenosis and aortic stenosis, Mitral insufficiency and aortic stenosis. Yes, my Mehta have answered the poll. Right. So this question everyone has voted. Right. So the answer remember it as tips. 
right remember it as tips now what is tips tricuspid insufficiency and pulmonary stenosis right tricuspid insufficiency and as well as pulmonary stenosis so that is what is called as tips okay so the most common valvular lesion seen in patients with the carcinoid syndrome is tricuspid insufficiency and as well as the pulmonary stenosis right so we will move to the next question so you should answer fast to get more points aortic regurgitation does not occur in acute mi marfan syndrome rheumatic heart disease infective endocarditis right so answer to this particular question is the acute mi right acute mi is the correct answer remember in acute mi okay i'll ask you the question here what is the most common valvular lesion you will have in acute mi yes can anyone answer this question what is the most common valvular lesion in acute mi very good mehta right very good uh, yes mukherjee correct so the most common valvular lesion in acute mi is your mitral regurgitation but what is given for you as a question that is aortic regurgitation which is an incorrect option right and the remaining all you will have the etiology of aortic regurgitation marfan syndrome rheumatic heart disease infective endocarditis you can see the development of aortic regurgitation right next so and let me tell you who has answered this fast mukesh has answered this fast and who is the leader of the poll until now so the leader of the leaderboard is mukesh very good mukesh right okay now we will move to the next question so you should answer fast to get more points Septokinase and urokinase are contraindicated in intracranial malignancy, pulmonary embolism, AV fistula, thrombophlebitis. right so answer to this particular question is the intracranial malignancy remember i will tell you some of the absolute contraindications of your thrombolytic agents so your streptokinase and urokinase both of them they are your thrombolytic agents right now where are they contraindicated remember they are contraindicated if there is any past history of intracranial hemorrhage right and they are contraindicated if there is any past history of ischemic stroke in the past 3 months they are contraindicated if there is any bleeding tendency except menstruation it's an absolute contraindication then it is contraindicated if there is any history of intracranial malignancy so these are some of the absolute contraindications right pulmonary embolism av fistula thrombophlebitis they are not contraindications for your thrombolytic agents right so the answer to this question is intracranial malignancy and until now who is the lead, who is the leader of the leaderboard okay so kanna has answered this question fast very good kanna and uh, yeah so kanna is leading the leaderboard he is with 2913 points and mukesh you are 2901 points okay now so there is a tug of war between now kanna and as well as mukesh and let me see and the question which is coming to you next is the last question of this particular uh, test and discussion and this last question is please answer fast to get more points right reperfusion is believed to restore the contractile function of stunned myocardium hibernating myocardium ischemic non viable myocardium non ischemic viable myocardium
right so okay so very few people have answered this question so the answer is hibernating myocardium hmm? the answer is hibernating myocardium now what is the stunned myocardium and what is this hibernating myocardium let me explain you right now after a myocardial infarction myocardial infarction is where the coronary artery is completely blocked right now when the coronary artery is completely blocked what will happen to the myocardium the contractile function of the myocardium will be reduced right now if the if you have re, if you have done a reperfusion either you have put a stent <coughs> or <coughs> you have given a thrombolytic agent so you have done a reperfusion to that particular myocardium if reperfusion improves the contractility you have done a reperfusion and there is restoration of the contractile function that is called hibernating myocardium you have done reperfusion but still the myocardium is not restored the contractile function right the myocardium has not restored the contractile function that is what is called as the stunned myocardium right that is what is called as the stunned myocardium so reperfusion is believed to restore the contractile function of the hibernating myocardium reperfusion is believed not to restore the contractile function of the stunned myocardium so this is what is the difference between the hibernating myocardium and as well as the stunned myocardium now let me see who is the leader of the leaderboard and who has won this particular quiz we will see now so this answer has been answered fast by mukesh so mukesh has answered this question fast and uh, very good so congratulations mukesh so you are the leader of this particular leaderboard and you have topped this i congratulate you and second is kanna so mukesh you have scored nearly around 3736 points in this particular leaderboard right so i congratulate you right so i congratulate you and tomorrow at the same time 5:30 we will come up with test and discussion on the questions related to neurology right we will come up with the test and discussion questions on the neurology and on this particular neurology session which i am going to conduct tomorrow at 5:30 that will be completely on the localization of the stroke right that will be completely on the localization of the stroke so see you tomorrow at 5:30 same time in order to have the same quiz and we will see who will be the leader tomorrow so thank you very much yeah some of these questions are previously asked questions and some of these questions are the new questions so if anyone has any doubts i'll be very happy to answer your questions yeah couple we didn't have any class yesterday the the entire series have started today itself the entire series started today itself couple we didn't have the class yesterday right so thank you very much and see you in the next session tomorrow at 5:30